Hi guys, welcome back to Simple Sips. I'm your host, David Messina. Last week we were in Paso. This week we are going east to Lodi to visit Clinker Brick Winery and have our special guest, Farrah Felton Jolly with Clinker Brick Winery, family owned and operated. So last year, if you missed it, Farrah came down to Wine Connection, had a great tasting. So if you weren't available to make it last year, please come by, pick up the wines and enjoy this virtually with Farrah. Thank you. Hi everyone at Wine Connection. Thank you for joining the Clinker Brick virtual tasting. I hope you enjoy learning a little bit about my family and our family wines from Lodi, California. So I'm Farah. I am the sixth generation grape grower in my family. We started growing grapes in 1990 and we started the winery in 2000. What did we do before 2000? We were just contract growers. We grew for Delicato, Woodbridge, Ron Mondavi, and other wineries all around uh, the state. But then in 2000, we decided we didn't want to just sell our grapes off and we wanted to make our own wine and show that Lode had the quality um, that a lot of people didn't know because it was just going into big blends with the big wineries. And we took that jump in 2000 and never looked back. And here we are today and here I am talking to you guys. So um, the biggest question we always get is how we got our name. Clinker Brick. It's very unique, very unusual, and with us, we will, we've always been a fan of being a little unique on the naming of the wines and representing our family in a different way. And with Clinker Brick, uh, it represents our family with the style of wines we produce, but also the family homes that we live in. So my house and my parents' house were built out of Clinker Bricks. Clinker Bricks are overfired bricks from the 1920s and 1930s that got burnt and bubbly at the bottom of the kiln before kilns were electric. And so when they would discard the, the eight layers of clinker bricks and work with the others because everybody back then wanted the perfect red brick. And my family and other farming families in Lodi said, we don't mind the color, we, we don't mind the look, they're really unique and it'll keep the cost down. So they hauled them from San Francisco for free and integrated them into our family homes and other family gr uh, growers around here. They're currently around where we grow all of our grapes about 20, or 20 homes are built out of clinker bricks, which is really unique. And my house is built in 37, and my parents' is 1940. And so it represents our family a different way than just not just having our last name on the label. Um, so that's a little bit about us, but I also want to talk about Lodi. Lodi as a region, Lodi is still a unknown region compared to other regions. We are still one of the newer regions, but we are also very experimental. And I really love that about Lodi is that we don't have the regulations that other regions do. And so we can grow any varietal we want. And so we have from Albarino to Dolcetto to Picpoul Blanc to Tanat. And it's really interesting to see how many varietals grow in Lodi, and that's due to our Mediterranean climate. So we cool down at night in the summer months, but we'll go up in the summer months to like 108, 110 sometimes. But because of that shift, it's because of the Delta breezes coming in uh, from, the, from San Francisco Bay every night during the summer months, we'll cool down almost 30 degrees during the night. And that really helps a lot of these varietals grow in our region. And especially with the old vine zins, they love the cool down, they love the heat, during the day and that allows long hang time in our region. So our uh, our harvest time is July to November. So we have a really long season for harvest and that is due to not always staying hot or and not staying super cold either. We have those shifts and that is really unique to Lodi. Lodi also has a lot of different soil types. Most of our vineyards are in the McCombie River sub ABA which is the biggest sub ABA of the seven subs uh, from, from Lodi. But in the McCombie River, you get the sandy loam soils. So sandy loam soils allow the root systems to go deeper and to breathe. And so you're getting those old vines in that are reaching the water table. And with McCombie River sub ABA, it's pretty much where all the old vine Zinfandels, the old vine Carignans and old vine Sinsos are. The oldest vineyard is actually, um, about five minutes away from us, it is a 135-year-old Sinso vineyard. That's the oldest vineyard in Lodi. 
And I, I feel Lodi has more old vine Zinfandels and old vine varietals than any other region currently. Right now with, Lo with us, we have vineyards that range from 50 to 122 years old. So truly all old vine Zinfandels, but um, the oldest ones, you know, they're producing a quarter ton the acre. But we always make sure that we take down the crop to four ton um, at the max. We do not want overcrop. Uh, back when we were contract growers, we were trying to grow for 14 ton to the acre. We're not in that business anymore. We really want to keep the quality in the bottles. And doing that, to do that, you need to take the crop off to four ton to the acre or less. So I'm gonna jump right into the wines now. Um, we're tasting four wines, which they're all beautiful reds, perfect for this season. And we're gonna start with Brick Mason. So Brick Mason is the newest to the lineup with us. It is a blend of Zin, Syrah, Petite Syrah, and Cabernet Sauvignon. It's 80% Zin, 10 Syrah, 5 Petite Syrah, and 5 Cab. I love it because it is such a great entry level. If you're trying to get into big old vine Zins, which sometimes can be a little scary, it is a perfect gateway into those old vine Zinfandels. It has that fruit, but it also has some structure to it. And I really love the Brick Mason for that price point because in that cat price category, usually you're getting really sweet, overripe, big fruit bombs. And with the Brick Mason, we add the Bear Syrah into it and we add a state Cabernet vineyard as well. So you're getting a lot of quality and a lot of structure in the bottle for that price category. And it's just a great bottle of wine for any night by the fire or having a pizza. It's just beautiful. The Fair Syrah, um, everybody wonders how I got my name on it. And my grandfather named the vineyard after me when I was five. And he said, I knew more about the vineyard than he did. And uh, he, he was my babysitter growing up and took me out into all the vineyards, especially the Syrah vineyard, and really wanted to make sure I knew how to sugar test, take second crop off, uh, fix drip, shovel weeds. He wanted me to know the ins and the outs of the vineyard. And I really appreciate that now looking back. And how I got my name on it, there's one big story. And it was my grandpa wanted to go just the vineyard, which is rip it up because he want, it was about a week after the rain and he said it was time to till the vineyard. And I said, Grandpa, it just rained. You're going to get stuck. And he said, oh, no, I'm not listening to a five-year-old. I've been farming for over 35 years. I'll be fine. So I hopped on the tractor with him and we went out into the middle of the vineyard and there was a low spot. And what happened? He got stuck. And I jumped off the vineyard and I ran all the way back to my grandparents' house, which is my house now. And I had my hands on my hips and I said, Grandpa, Grandpa got stuck and he didn't listen to me. And my grandma couldn't stop laughing because I was so serious and so upset that my grandpa got the tractor stuck and just didn't listen to me. And he came in and he said, you know, I think she knows more about the vineyards than I do. Um, I'm going to name the vineyard the Farrah Vineyard. And if you look at the label on the Farrah Syrah, there's actually an accent over the A. And so it's the Farrah Syrah. So growing up, my nickname was Farrah. And my dad didn't just want to put the Farrah Vineyard on it because everybody puts the name in a vineyard on a bottle of wine, it seems like. And so again, like our unique name, Clinker Brick, he wanted to be unique with the Farrah Syrah. So he named it the Farrah Syrah. Hey, Syrah. Um, but it's, everybody, everybody asks, is this my favorite wine in our portfolio? I have to say out of the reds, it is. And it's not because my name's on it. I just love Syrah. Syrah is a beautiful varietal that is not as well known in, in the States. There's only two or three producers in Lodi that are producing a Syrah. And, you know, it is a little scary sometimes to try to grab a Syrah off the shelf. And if you want a cab or a Zin, you, you might feel a little more safe. But Syrahs are just perfect food wines, especially ours. You know, in the price point, you don't see too many Syrahs in our price category. Usually they're $40 or higher. And with our Syrah, you get that old world meets new world style. So you're getting that earthiness of old world um, French style, and you're getting that big fruit from California and from Lodi. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful wine. Pairs with a duck, pizza, mushroom risotto. It goes with a lot of different foods. Um, the next one I want to talk about is the Cab. So Cab is our second newest to the lineup. It's about four years old with us. We've always been producing Cabernet. Uh, Cab has been grown here in Lodi for generations. It's the second largest varietal actually being grown in Lodi. 
after Zinfandel. Zinfandel, there's 40,000 acres grow, being grown here in Lodi and 20,000 acres of Cabernet. But nobody thinks of Lodi for Cab. Cab should be Napa. But Lodi is bringing a different style of Cabernet to the table for price point, for style, for layers. It, they're not, it's not gonna be as big on tannin. It's gonna be really smooth on tannin. It is gonna be easier to drink. It's a good gateway cab. If you're trying to get into Cabernets and you're scared of that big tannin bomb, this is a great user-friendly style cab that can get you into the Cabernets. But also if somebody's not a fan of cab, but you have a cab drinker at the party too, you, you can get a Lodi Cabernet, the Clinkerberg cab, and you, it, it's a crowd pleaser. It's beautiful. It'll make the cab drinker happy. And it'll make the non-cab drinker happy. So again, very nice Cabernet, French oak, 15 months. Uh, we really don't want to do two over oak, so we do 50-50 new and used on the oak treatment. So you get that oak, but you also get some very balanced oak style as well. Next is the Old Ghost, and last is the Old Ghost. Um, old Ghost is our reserve Old Vine Zinfandel. It's a beautiful Zin. It's not your typical Old Vine Zinfandel. Usually from Lodi, you think big fruit, Old Vine Zin. With Ghost, you're getting layers, you're getting elegance, you're getting tannin. I call it the Cab Drinker's Old Vine Zin because it has that elegance and that tan structure that most Zins do not have. How do we get our name or, for Old Ghost? My dad was out in one of our vineyards it, early in the morning and the Thule fog was rolling in. So we get fog during the winter months because of the moisture in a lot of our vineyards around here. And they're all dormant, so they're really eerie already. And my dad was out looking at the vineyard and it just was so ghostly and eerie. And he said, man, it looks like a ghost should be farming this place. It's just really eerie. And the old vines are half on their way out. They're half dead, low yield. He's like, that's a perfect name to represent the old vines of Fendels of Lodi. And that's how Ghost was born. Um, so Ghost, the vineyard will change every year. We're looking for a style and the, from the vineyards. And most of the vineyards are dry farmed. So they will change every year. And we really wanna make sure we have consistency in our wines. So with that, we pick one vineyard that has that style that we're looking for. So the Ghost, like I mentioned earlier, elegance, layers, tannin, some fruit as well. That's what we look for in the vineyard that we pick for the ghost. So the ghost this year is a 106 year old vineyard. Very big wine, 59 alcohol. Watch out, it, it can ke catch you pretty fast. But it doesn't taste or drink hot like that high of alcohol. It's very integrated and we take pride in that because, you know, Lodi, they don't, everybody thinks Lodi is just lower end Zins. But we do have Zinfandels that go up to $75 in Lodi now. And we've been told by multiple wineries, if it wasn't for the Old Ghost, there wouldn't be those $75 bottles of Old Vine Zinfandel. And we really take pride in that because we took the jump in 2003 to start showing that Lodi can produce premium and quality and higher end wines. And it, we took that jump. And now if you look at all the wines in Lodi, there's price points from $5 up to $75. So it's a really unique region um, and we're happy to be part of it and seeing it grow. So those are the four wines we're tasting and I hope you enjoyed all of them. I wish I was there in person. Last year I did a tasting at Wine Connection. It was great and um, I'm really looking forward to coming back and seeing everybody in person, hopefully next year, fingers crossed. Um, but until then, I will uh, be doing videos like this and hope everybody enjoyed and hope you enjoyed tasting the wines and listening to my story and a little bit about Lodi.